So this is my dog, Baby, and we found her about five years ago. Um, she was wandering the woods, and my mom's friend was coming over to visit, and she ended up finding her. Um, so we called all the shelters and put up flyers looking for her, and no one claimed her. No one said they were missing a dog, so we ended up keeping her. Um, at that time, we didn't have any other dogs. And she's actually been great since, um, however, last year she started seizing, and so we took her to the vet, and she's on, like, five different medications, and she's had about two seizure, seizures since um, she's been on the medication, and she also developed an issue with her thyroid, and she's hypothyroid, um, so... Um, one of the issues is she wasn't microchipped when we did find her, um, so if she was, we probably could have returned her to her owner, as well as if the um, dog birth certificate legislation was put into, um, into act, um, her parents' information would have been included in the birth certificate, which may have included any um, illnesses that they had or genetic diseases that they had, so we would be able to know that um, baby had this issue um, previous to her um, starting to seize, so maybe we would have known what to look for. Okay. And also, not only am I the only person who has had um, issues and problems with their dog, uh, the one vet that I work for, he ended up um, saving a dog that was going to be euthanized, who also developed issues uh, with seizing, as well as my dog, Baby, and this is his story. Okay. Okay. I met Sonny when I was an associate veterinarian in Clinton, New Jersey, um, approximately eight years ago. And he was just a puppy um, bought from a breeder in New Jersey, a uh, purebred golden. And he was neutered at that practice, and approximately at one year of age, he was diagnosed with epilepsy. During that time, he was placed on uh, several medications, including phenobarb and potassium bromide. And then I left that practice, and four years later, when I was working at an emergency practice in, in uh, Somerville, uh, I heard a story about a golden who was relinquished by the owner because he had a giant seizure and they, they had lost their job and they could not afford the workup. So they were going to euthanize the vet, and the technician took Sonny in. So I went to the clinic and looked through the paperwork because I was looking for a second dog, and um, I'm leaping through the paperwork, and I... I see this name, Sunny Pyle, and it looked familiar, and then I keep leafing. And then I see my handwriting, and so I realized that I met him four years earlier. So um, I took him in for a trial period with my other dog for five days, and my wife and I decided we'd like to keep him. So we kept him, and I've had him ever since. It was approximately um, six, seven years. So what precautions do you have to take in regards to vaccines or anesthesia? Don't ask me again. What precautions do you have to take in regards to vaccinating Sonny? Um, because he's on so many seizure meds, specifically phenobarbital, it, it can affect his metabolism. As far as vaccines go, if the pet is healthy, um, we can vaccinate. In Sonny's case, I have been able to vaccinate him. I, I don't do more than one vaccine at a time. Um, but the biggest precaution I have with him is any sort of medication he has to be on. Because the phenobarbital increases the pet's metabolism, it can actually make a lower dose medication um, the effect equivalent to a higher dose medication. So you have to be very careful about the dosing you do. And you also have to be very careful about certain drug interactions. I think he's on five anti-seizure meds right now. Okay. All right. Thank you.